Hey everybody, I have gotten so many questions about my chamomile that I thought it would be easier to do a quick video with some of my tips on how I grow it and then how I dry it. Um, also, I want to apologize. I've got to wear sunglasses. The sun is really bright right now. Um, and the chamomile is actually open now, but it closes when it gets to dusk time and in the early morning. So it kind of drops its petals and then the petals open back up when the sun comes out. So I thought it would be really cool for you guys to see it now. Um, the ideal time to harvest would be after the dew dries in the morning, but I wasn't here for that. So I'm here now and I'm just going to show you how I do this. So this is my chamomile and I personally have had the best luck direct sowing it and you can see this one's just like at the border of a path where I have my lemon tree. There's also some growing under the lemon tree but I really feel like it enjoys the warmth of the sun. Um, oh, woo, it's a little windy. Um, but I just throw the seeds out under the lemon tree and then I'll scatter just a little bit of seed starter mix over the top and water and the chamomile just comes up wherever it's happy. So that is how I grow chamomile from seed. But when it comes time for harvesting, you wanna to continue to pick it so it can continue to grow and produce blooms. And what I like to do, I don't know if you can see this, um, but you just pull off a flower head, just a single flower head like that. Um, you don't really want the stem, um, so try not to get it. But if you do have a little bit of stem, that's okay too. So I will pull off a few flowers. And obviously, this is just how I do it. I'm sure there's other ways. I've even been told that there's a tool that large producers of chamomile use to harvest the blooms. Um, but this is what I do. I just take the little blossoms off. All right, so surprisingly, this chamomile is all from one plant. Um, it's pretty big, it's very happy. Um, but I get that question a lot, like how many plants is this? This is one. Um, but it won't get any taller than this, and it's about two to three feet tall. So I just wanted to make a note about bugs. As you're picking your flowers, just look for bugs and inspect. If it has bugs, I tend not to use it, um, simply because there's just so many blooms, I can afford to not use some of them. But in general, this chamomile just stays pest free, and it actually has a lot of ladybugs. So um, it tends not to really have any aphids on it. And as you can see, I mean, it looks pretty good. But just as you're going, especially if you're gonna use it for tea, you just wanna make sure there are no bugs on the flowers that you're collecting. All right, so one of the other questions I get is, do you wash the blossoms before you dry them? And that's really up to you if you feel like they need to be washed, but I grew these. I know exactly where they've been. I know what's been um, on them, which the answer is nothing. So I do not usually wash the blossoms, but if you want to, you can actually rinse them off in water and then pat dry before you go through the drying process. So when you're going to pick chamomile, you want to Pick as often as possible once the flowers are fully open, mainly because this promotes extra growth or more flowers to form. Um, and also I like to leave some on there at, to get older and then drop to the ground and reseed. So chamomile is actually an avid self-sower or self-seeder. And I don't really have to do much else after it's taken over a patch. So leave some of the older blossoms on there and they'll get old and fall to the ground and then they will provide you with chamomile for the following season. My favorite use for chamomile is in tea. So once it's dried, I just use it as a tea and it's just really calming. It has a wonderful scent and I usually drop a little bit of honey in there and that's one of my favorite drinks. So there are a couple different ways to dry your chamomile. Um, I haven't always had a dehydrator, so what I used to do is take paper towel sheets and just lay the blooms out on those. And those are nice because the paper towel also absorbs some of the moisture. And it actually takes a few days for them to get fully dried. Um, but now I have a dehydrator that I got as a present, so I've been trying that out and seeing how I like it. And it comes with these trays. And what I do is I just lay the blooms out on the tray 
and then I put it in the dehydrator on the lowest setting or the second lowest setting, depending on how quickly you wanna dry. Obviously, you wanna keep things as natural as possible because severe heat can always damage the properties of whatever you're trying, trying to dry. So um, you're gonna pick the blooms, you lay them out on the tray, and then put them in the dehydrator, and usually, um, I think the lowest setting I have is 95, and then the next one up is about 105. Um, but you just stick it in there for about a day. So you wanna make sure that um, you let them dry completely because if you have any moisture left in there, that will mean that when you store it, it can spoil or mold. So just make sure it's completely dry um, before you store it. And remember, never store your herbs or dried goods in a place that gets sunlight. You wanna put it in a dark, cool cabinet, preferably in like a glass jar, nothing that's porous because that can mean moisture can get in. Um, but that is all I do for my chamomile and how I dry it. So these are the chamomile blossoms, completely dried and ready to be stored. So you can use the chamomile blossoms fresh for tea as well as dried, but I've tried both ways and I find the flavor of the dried to be better. So I really think that's a personal preference. And um, again, I'm not an expert, but this is just how we do it. Um, another thing to know is if you're going to store your chamomile, then it would need to be dried, um, fully dried, and that way it won't grow any mold or anything like that.